it's not like a this or that you know this isn't this this isn't like some food or something okay next thing <laughs> Hey everybody, it's your girl Sincerely Dre, and I'm back today with another video. So, as I can see from the title down below, in today's video, I'm going to be telling y'all some of the things that I wish I knew before coming to college. If you don't already know me, can't tell, buy my shirt if you're new to this channel. Hey, y'all, hey. I go to the University of Georgia here in Athens, Georgia, and I'm a current second year going into my third year. And honestly, after everything that happened last year, it was really hard for me to really come to a conclusion as to what I really learned last year. That's why I'm doing it now. But... I just want to tell y'all some things that I wish that I knew before going into college along with like some things that a lot of people didn't really know that I just want to pass on the advice to our rising and incoming freshmen. So this can, uh, this can be applied to any college as well. It's not just UGA specific. If you go to any college, most of this stuff, if not all of it, will apply to you as well. So let's go ahead and get right into it. If you see me looking down, it's because I wrote down what I wanted to say just so that I'm not talking too long. So the first thing that I wish I knew before coming to college was that it is okay to not know what you want to major in. Like I picked a major, I'm a communication studies major and I don't really regret that major decision. The reason why I chose that major was because I was like, okay, well, no matter what I do plan on doing after college, I know that everybody needs communication. That is something that can be applied in almost any skill and in any job that you go to. And a lot of jobs, they always say they want somebody with good communication skills. So I'm just like, okay, well, I might as well do that. Turns around, I think last summer, when I started doing some more deep dives into some possible careers that I would like to do, I realized that honestly, for what I want to do now, I should have been a different major. But yeah, I wish that I would have known that it was okay to not really know your major, not really pick it. Even if you know that you want to go to college now, if you don't really want to go to college and you don't know what major you want to do, I'll just say don't go to college at all. But that's another video for another time. The next thing was to wait to buy books. And I know everybody says this all the time, but honestly, why I'm saying this is because I made a very big mistake first semester i signed up for a french class you guys probably saw that in my first day of school vlog from freshman year i signed up for a french class and honestly i was confused like i was very confused i did not know what that man was saying at all and i understand like it's a foreign language class you're not really gonna know what they're saying because they want to speak to you in the language i went into the second week still like looking at ad drop but not really deciding i was still confused for that class with, I don't, I'm, I think this is the same way with other schools as well, but many foreign language classes, especially like your French and your Spanish, those are gonna require an access code for you to do your homework. So I jumped on that quick because I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna need this access code so I can do my homework. Like my free trial is gonna end soon. So I bought that book and that French book was like $500, no lie. Like $500 for the book and the access code. I ended up, probably like the third week into school, maybe third or fourth week, I was looking at it and I was like, honestly, I have no clue what I'm doing. I don't know what this guy is saying. I'm trying my hardest. I'm looking at what's going on and I don't know. Like I'm sitting here confused in class. Like genuinely, I don't know what's going on. And it was so hard because like I was telling my dad like, oh, I don't even know what's going on, but I drop already passed and I don't want to fail and all this stuff with French. And he was just like, oh, well, you know, you should still try and all that stuff because it's a it's a language, so it's gonna be hard. But honestly, I was just like, I can't do this. I ended up having to withdraw because it was after the ad drop deadline. I was trying to stay open-minded and then at some point it just didn't work out. So honestly, I wish that I would have waited to get that book because it was a lot of money and I scratched off the access code. I didn't use it, but just trying to figure out how can we resell this after spending 
$500 on a book was just a lot and I, I really felt bad and that's something that always rings in my head now on with classes to like just cool off on getting the books until I really know that this is a class that I want to stay in and then I'll get the books. The next thing that I wish I would have known before coming to college was to become best friends with studying. I love to tell y'all for all my people, for all my 4.0 people, for all my deans list, honor roll people from high school, just because you didn't study in high school does not mean that you don't need to study in college. I promise you, studying was not necessarily something that I did just because that's not the way that I learned. So I didn't really study at all. And I took a plant bio class my first semester. I didn't do good on the first test. I didn't do good on the first test at all. I ended up having to retake that test thank god for our teachers allowing us to retake tests in that class but i didn't do too hot on it and ever since then i had to learn how how can i make studying work best for me i'm not saying that i study all the time i'm not saying that i study the same way for every single class but i did have to learn how can i get this knowledge to stick in my head a little bit better the next thing is that rejection does not define who you are now this is something that I did know in high school, but it was a prominent thing for me even more in college and a prominent thing for a lot of freshmen on my campus and it was like a really big deal for people. When you go to sign up for those prestigious organizations on campus or you go to be part of those different clubs and activities that require applications on campus, just know that especially as a freshman especially as a freshman just because they rejected you now or they said you're not allowed in it now they didn't choose you for this next round of people that does not mean that you are not good enough for that group that does not mean anything at all and honestly one tip and advice that i would give to a lot of you all is after getting emails like that go back to them, especially if it's something that you really see yourself being a part of or something that their values align with your values as well. I would definitely say to email their board of people or email whoever you can or anybody that you know that did make it and go to talk with them. Interview or ask for an interview with the people that interviewed you and say, hey, do you guys have any notes for me? I know I didn't make it this time, but I just, I'm always looking to expand and to get better at my interviewing skills and just ask them what can I do better was there anything that I did that I should fix for the next time and honestly I did that for a couple of mine and guess what going into my second year I got most of those things or no I think everything that I did not get first year I got my second year why because I learned okay this is where I messed up this is where I talked to so that they know that I still am interested and this is how I can fix my interviews for next time. Even if you don't want to apply again for the next year, I would still suggest doing it because at the end of the day, there will always be another interview that needs to be held, whether that's your next job or next whatever it is. So definitely always know that rejection does not mean that you are not good. It could just mean that this is not your time. You could try next year and you'll probably get it. Or it's just maybe that group is just not for you altogether. There were some groups that after I did that and after talking to some other people, I realized that maybe those values don't really align with what I want to do and I don't really see what I can learn from this group and then you don't apply the next year and it just saves you a little extra time from applications. So yeah, just know that rejection does not mean that you are not valued and that you are not good and that you are not worth it. The next thing that I wish that I knew was that it's okay to do things solo dolo. Now this is one thing that I also kind of already knew just because I'm an introvert so I tend to hang around myself. That's just how I regain my own energy is just by having my alone time. But one thing I learned this year more was that a lot of people were really afraid to sit by themselves going to like the dining halls and doing different things. I want y'all to know that that is the easiest way for you to make friends is to go places by yourself. When you go places by yourself, other people are going to see you and they're going to want to talk who are also alone. Everybody is new, so don't be afraid of going up to people and just know that in college, because you're always with people and if you're a freshman just like me who roomed with somebody in their same exact room, like slept in the same room with somebody, you will value those a long time because once you start getting to know everybody and everything, it's like, it's really hard to find a long time and just time for you to just before going back out so definitely it's okay to do things solo dolo I promise you it's going to be perfectly fine this is college there are a lot of people there are a lot of other people who are also trying to make friends trying to find people so it's perfectly fine nobody's going to look at you like you're crazy just 
do you and tell them mind their business if they worried about what you do the next thing that i wish that i knew was to be intentional and for this one i would really have to shout out one of my friends william he is somebody that i learned this from i realized that i knew a lot of people on campus i was involved in a lot of things i was in a lot of group chats i knew a lot of people on campus a lot of people could say hi to me i could say hi to other people but i was never intentional with any of those friendships and with any of those people and honestly if i could do first year back over that's one thing that i would change is to be more intentional it's just like you know the kind of thing where like you know you go to a big campus so you don't know if people remember you all the time or you don't know if like people are too busy or something or if you see somebody with other people i don't want to go up to the whole group just because like that's just my introvertedness these people knew me people knew my name all those sort of things and i hang around them a lot of time no problems or anything but i just was not intentional and probably like anything that I did so that's a big thing that I would say is to be intentional once you meet people try to get their phone number if you don't want to get their phone number try to get like their Instagram or something comment on their like post that they have and all that sort of stuff ask them how are you doing like actually try to be intentional with your conversations and actually care when you ask somebody how are they doing actually listen to what they say so that you can follow back on it like the next time that you see them like oh how's that internship or oh what happened with that thing that you applied for whatever the case may be it's gonna change a lot once you start being intentional the next thing that i wish i knew before going to college was to not compare and this is beyond just your school don't compare what you're doing to your other friends who went to other schools don't compare what you're doing to other youtubers don't compare what you're doing to other people on your campus what we need to remember is that this is not a reality TV show. What we're seeing on social media, what we're seeing on Twitter, what we're seeing when we even see people in class or like at different events is the highlight of that person's life. We're not seeing that person when they're in their room and they're crying. We're not seeing that person when they're in their room and they're breaking out. We're not seeing that person when they're failing their test. We're not seeing this person when they're yelling at people. We're not seeing these, we're not seeing these people in everything that they do. Just because someone else is getting certain accolades or is doing that in third or it seems to have more of something than what you have does not mean that that's really what's going on. So I would definitely say don't compare yourself to what's going to other people because once you actually have conversations with some of these people, you'll realize that there's a more than what's on the surface. They're deeper than what's on the surface. Also, just because like, you know, everybody wants to seem that they're fine. You know, a lot of people want to seem that they're fine. But I know a lot of people who like, they ended up transferring after their first year. Some ended up transferring after their second semester. But you would have never known why they transferred because from what you could see on social media, from what you see that they put out there, it seems like, oh, they're living the best time of their life and they love everybody who's with them. But we have to remember that not everybody is showing their true self. Actually, go to the mirror right now and tell yourself that you're the baddest person, that you are the best person, you are everything. You are everything in a bag of chips. So just remember that because comparing is not gonna be it. So the next thing that I wish that I knew before going into college was that, was that self care is the best care. Honestly, it may seem very like, okay, duh, but like honestly, Self-care was not a big thing for me, especially in high school. I was very much go, 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 what's the next thing? Oh, I I have a lot of interest, so I'm always involved in a lot of things. So I'm always just like, okay, from here to here to here to here, I need to be this, that, and third. Self-care was not a big part for me at all. Like to the point where I would stay up to do all schoolwork before I went to sleep, which is okay, duh but I would not eat dinner with everybody else in the sense of I'm gonna sit and I'm gonna do my schoolwork and then when I'm done with my schoolwork then I'm gonna eat so you could just think about like what happens over time with that way of thinking and just like always putting myself out there and doing all these things which is perfectly fine but just having a good balance and remembering that you need to just have one day for yourself so that was one thing like you could just feel burnt out at the end of the day when you just start okay i'm from here to here to here to there sort of thing so just give yourself at least one day out the week to be a you day a me day for me my days are usually sundays for that and on sundays i'm just like okay i'm not gonna try to go to work if i go to work i'll go to work in the morning or something 
I'm gonna try my absolute best to not touch any schoolwork on a Sunday. On Sundays, you can take your longer showers, spend longer time with music and all that sort of stuff. A face mask day on Sunday, just a day to relax, watch your shows that you enjoy watching on Sundays. That was the big thing for me. I, now that I don't have a dining or a meal plan, I like to cook on Sundays as well just because I like cooking personally. It's very sort of like therapeutic for me as well. So just finding things that you like to do and saying, I'm gonna pick at least one day. If I can't do something every single day for myself, pick at least one day out the week that you can be like, okay, this is me. I'm going to give myself as much energy as I give to all these other extracurricular things. Because at the end of the day, when all those things are said and done, you have to live with yourself, so just self-care. Now, the next thing that's kind of on the same lines as that that I wish that I knew before going to, into college was to get sleep. Now, y'all already heard what I just said, that something that I'm still trying to get over is the fact that I tend to not eat until I'm done with schoolwork. It's just an issue. But along with that is that I, like I said, I will stay up as long as it takes until I get schoolwork done. It was a very bad habit that I developed in middle school. And honestly, one thing I have to tell myself, especially when you're by yourself. Now, a big thing for me was learning how to wake up on my own and just learning that, you know, sleep recoups the body. Sleep helps everything. You know, the way I like to think about it is that your body works faster, more things happen, more things recoup in your body when you're asleep. That's the way that I like to think about it. So I would definitely say, get more sleep. I had to start telling myself freshman year, especially because I had earlier earlier classes that I could not stay up the same way that I used to stay up in high school, especially because it already takes me a long time to wake up in the morning. I'm not a morning person. So one thing that I had to do was give myself a midnight cutoff to at least be in bed by 1 a.m. So a midnight cutoff for me is basically I'm going to try my hardest to stop doing schoolwork at midnight. If it's not a project or something that's due right the next day, I'm stopping all schoolwork, all everything at midnight. And at midnight, then I'll eat my dinner, then I'll brush my teeth, wash my face, all that sort of stuff and get to bed. Because if I don't do that, honestly, I'll probably be up to like three or four to be completely honest. Cause it takes me a long time to get things done. You need sleep to feel better to be energized the next day, to not be like all drowsy. So definitely get your sleep. It's very important. Don't rely on caffeine. I know a lot of people now who literally, if they don't have like coffee or something of such, they will have a headache. It's not pretty. So do not try to like fall back on soda or coffee or anything like that actually get sleep <laughs> like that's the best thing to do just to actually get sleep one of the last things i wish that i knew before going into college was learning the word no now it seems very simple because you know yes no yes no everybody knows that but i will tell y'all especially if you're somebody like me who gets really passionate and motivated about what i'm doing you're gonna feel bad when you say no to people and this is for like organizations and bigger things on campus because you know they always need people to do things and so i was like okay well if you have any free time come out and do this stuff learn how to say no to people because when i tell you i was i was making it work freshman year with everything that i was involved in but honestly ripping and running from this to that to this to that to this to that to this to that it was too much it was too much especially as a freshman i'm still trying to learn what's going on on campus all my everybody that i know is doing these events and stuff and i'm on exec boards i'm over here helping things and i'm like can i just get a break like <laughs> it was really hard for me to say no what another thing that i had to learn along with saying no is learning that just because you are not doing anything just because you are free does not mean that you are free to other people that is a very big thing just because you don't have class does not mean that you're available to go do something you still need to have your self-care. You still need to have time to do your schoolwork. You still need to have time to be a freshman, to be a college student. There's only four years, sometimes less, sometimes more in college. You want to enjoy this time while you have it before you get big girl and big boy responsibilities. So I would definitely say learning how to say the word no 
you are a person at the end of the day people will find a way to make things work one of the biggest things that i learned and one something that i still keep with me to this day just because i'm free does not mean that i'm free to you i need time to relax for myself after taking all these classes all these tests all these assignments everything so yeah if you're seeing this and you're in school already or if you're if you already graduated or anything like that and you have any tips and advice for any other freshmen before going to college i would definitely say leave them down in the comments down below also if y'all want to know what i learned in my second year or just any other things about college definitely let me know down below as well because i will definitely get to them and make sure you follow me on instagram my am Cecilia Drew because of course i post on there all the time and i'm able to be more interactive with y'all on there because you know it's just on my phone and make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell just so you can see more videos just like this along with some of the other videos that I have posted on college content before this. And remember that I love you guys so much. And my name is Sincerely Dree and I'll see you on the next video. Bye!